Alrighty, today on Strip Threads we try to resurrect a 1977 Toyota Celica. Maybe. We'll see. Stay tuned. Morning and welcome to Strip Threads. I am your host, Mike. Uh, this morning, we are going to work on a 77 Toyota Celica. This car has been sitting, oh, since the last tag on it was 05. Uh, it looks like it's been sitting about that long. This car, I'll show it to you here. This car I got from a friend of mine who is a Celica fanatic. He is moving to Arkansas, so he won't be too far from where we're going to be. Far enough, but not as far as being from here. This car, here I'll show you. This car was originally black, and then it was yellow, and then it was blue. Hmm. You can see all the rubber is destroyed in it. I can actually see right down into the car through that hole there. Uh, Went and picked this up yesterday. Next door neighbor Mike, we picked it up with his uh, Frontier or uh, Titan, actually. I uh, didn't feel confident pulling it behind the courier in the rain. There's not much weight on the back of the courier. That tire went flat. Baby Celica's here. I didn't feel confident pulling it behind the courier in the rain because there's not enough weight on the rear end and I felt it would probably crash. And Mike drives like a bat out of hell, so that wasn't at all fun either. Okay, you see we have half a dash. It's easier for me to tell you what parts are left in the interior than tell you what's missing. So, we have half a dash. We have... A little bit of carpet left. We have some rusty floors, unfortunately. We have some plastic panels. One seat. We have a back seat. Steering wheel. We have one door panel. We have the headliner board. Last night I ripped off all the vinyl because it was hanging in my face. Oh, we have a set of keys, thank God. Looks like there was an owner's manual in that glove box, but the rats chewed it all up. We have a whole lot of rat poop in this car. No rats. We have a 22R, or 20R, sorry. We have a Weber carburetor. Factory AC. And it's all there. That's kind of nice. We have a header. Now I'm doubting that this header was put on for performance reasons. Probably put on because the original manifold cracked. That was kind of a common thing in these. No power steering, worm and ball, radiator. Uh, there was a battery in it. I put that one in it last night just to see if it would turn over. And it does. No. This, people, is why you do not put tap water in your radiator. You see all this calcium lime build up here? See that? The problem with that is they call it solder bloom. I'll be willing to bet that the bottom of the tubes on the bottom tank 
are probably just about completely plugged with that stuff. It's kind of hard to clean without a hard acid. Uh, that was a nice panel up until last night. We destroyed it with the tow, dog, tow bar. Uh, I don't really care about the about the body. Um, so this is Spirit, our tortoise show. She's very vocal about wanting attention. The cowl is showing some pretty bad signs of rot, and that is a very bad thing. Uh, if I was going to restore this car, that would be pretty well a deal breaker. Trying to fix that on a car you're going to drive. Being how I'm going to have to remove most of that stuff on top of the cow anyway, it's not that big a deal for my work because I'm going to be changing all that around anyhow. Uh, <sighs> see the front fenders are pretty pitted up with rot. In front and back, you see the bubbling right there. Uh, that's not a big deal because I'm not going to use the fenders. Doors are showing. Again, I'm not going to use the doors. The lots of them are showing. Some pretty good pitting. No holes that I found. But I need to get underneath it and take a look. Like right there is real bad. That could be a problem. But being that I need to try to figure out a way to put the cricket... Um, outer rocker over the Toyota inner rocker. It might not be that big of a deal. You can see the fender wells rotted through all the way over. I think there's a lot of filler in there anyway. Like maybe it was rusted out before. See that's all rusted through. That's not going to get used anyway. The rear hatch is rusted through underneath those bubbles. Under the tail lights, thrust it out. He got hit on this quarter. Looks like a lot of work was done right here over the wheelhouse. I see filler, filler pitting there. I think. I know there's filler here in this corner. None of that matters. It's getting chopped off. Hopefully the wheelhouse isn't too, too damaged because I'll need to use the Toyota wheelhouse and made it with the Cricut quarter skin. You see a pretty good rust spot there. Same thing over on this side with the rocker. You know, this door is completely filled with filler. You can see how thick it is there and it's cracking anyway. The floorboards are rotten. I don't know how bad. Last night, the worst spot I saw, I poked my finger through. And it's not, I don't like that I have to do them. I didn't have to do them with the Corolla. But, you can see the roof is rotting out too. There's a couple spots here where the inner gussets are. These are Volkswagen Audi somethings. I don't know. Frankly, I don't care. The back seat, though, is the right width. If I just need this upholstery material, maybe the foam on the Cricut Springs, I could do that. So you see there's some pretty heavy flaking back here. I don't think it's that bad. I need to get this sound deadening off and see how it looks underneath it. The fact that there's green is a very bad sign. See, look at that. There's been a lot of rodents in here. The rodent urine is quite possibly the worst thing in the world for cars. Uh, how, if I have to replace the floors, it gives me an excuse to gusset everything. Build subframe connectors. You know, I'm going to double line the subframes. A little more work, but... Really, it'd be smarter on my part to do that, anyhow. So, that's where we're at. My 
my plans for this car. Oh, I want to show you something real bad here. I got to pull this off before we can do anything. Apparently there was a rat nest, a mouse nest down in his carburetor, so he just completely filled with the droppings. How they got inside there, I don't know. Maybe someone left it off. I don't have the clips for that thing anyway. I may have some somewhere, I don't know, but it's not a deal breaker. Uh, what would be a deal breaker is a lot of times on these cars you'll see up in these areas here, it'll be rotten, rotted through up around the tops of the towers here. See all through here. It's fine. Frame rails look fine from what I can see of them. I need to get underneath the car. Hopefully everything's fine there. I should pull this wiper motor off and clean out all that stuff, run a vacuum through it. The oil is very clean, antifreeze is very clean and full. The engine does turn over. Uh, there's a lot of vacuum hoses. It still has the air injection and everything on it. I think it still has an EGR valve on it. Still has, you know, everything's hooked up. That's why I say that header is more of a factory replacement thing than a performance thing. So, the plan for this car. I want, if I get it started and I get it running and I get it running well, I want to get it roadworthy. Put tires on it. Uh, Got to go through brakes. Like right now, it only has half a circuit. That reservoir was full. That one was empty, and the clutch master was empty. It has no clutch. It has no clutch pedal. It does have the clutch engages. Uh, I want to get this thing roadworthy, and I want to try to drive it to Kansas. So it needs to be safe. It needs to be reliable. Get it running. Put tires on it. Go through the brakes. Put a thermostat in it. Maybe replace hoses. I'm not sure about this one. Yeah, we replace the upper hose. Probably replace the lower hose. Maybe heater hoses. Who knows? You gotta have a heater because it'll be in the middle of winter. The wipers do work, but only on high speed. However, the wiper arms are missing. Uh, I'm pretty sure they're the same spindles as what the Courier uses. And I've got a couple Mazda ones. Courier ones around here. Tail lights. All I really need to do with taillights is just weld a piece of metal or bolt a piece of metal over that opening and just put a couple trailer lights in it. That's all. That's all that it needs. Uh, let's see. So last night, checking things out, I had headlights, high beams. I did not have turn signals. I did not have heater. I basically had none of the um, accessories that turn on with the key. And I did have dash lights, but now I don't. I did touch the fuse box, and the fuses are all crusty, so my fault. I'm going to have to go through that. I'll show you some more dismaying news, however. The, if I remember correctly, the Patina Cricket had a good spare tire well. This Toyota does not. And it's full of water, which is why it doesn't have a good spray tire. I noticed last night that it was missing wires. These baby super wheels need to be sandblasted, polished. Somebody will probably want them. Yeah, okay, so this stuff was all unplugged, so I didn't have a working fuel pump. Which is good because I see a lot of these guys will start these cars up with the fuel lines connected and they're just pumping all that rotten gas right into the carburetor. One thing I haven't seen addressed on a lot of these episodes with people is old rotten gas when it's real sour like that. Like people will drain the gas out and fill it up with new gas. Well, that's not good enough. That old gas is about like sugar. It gets on the valve stems and then when your engine cools off it basically glues the valves in place and then when you try to fire it up the valves are stuck pistons come up and hit them and car engine sues and you never get the thing started hopefully this gas tank's still good i haven't i haven't sampled the flavor of the uh fuel that's still in it if there's any fuel in it i don't know why this thing was parked oh, look at that that's nice my buddy didn't know why it was parked 
Ooh. Yeah, this whole thing's collapsing here. You do not lean on that very, very much. Everything's just so damp. I mean, welcome to Washington. Just so damp. So, in the cricket, the gas tank sits off to the side, and the spare tire well is over here, and it's a lot deeper. It has a flat floor. This, as you can see, had a raised floor. Here's some brackets. It's not very deep. Um, so, if I'm going to combine the two, I might be able to use some of the cricket floor and drop it down. But the gas tank is another problem. I might be able to get away with using a gas tank. I, I'm pretty sure the gas tank in the patina cricket is good. You got a factory tack. You got 125 mile an hour speedometer. Oil and charge. Somebody put a little vacuum gauge in it. It's kind of cute. A couple of idiot lights. You know, this is a, a fairly cool dashboard actually. <clears throat> uh, and it might even. Might even be able to make it work somehow. You'd find a dash pad, which is going to be hard. All the visors and visors and mirrors are gone, which I don't really care. I wasn't planning on keeping this thing. Somebody might want this hardboard. It's coming out though because it's dro drooping down in my face. The shields. Make sure gas gets shot. This thing's bad. Luke said it stank in here, but I can't actually smell anything. My sniffer doesn't work anymore. Ashtray's clean. Oh. Yeah, somebody took all these parts out. One interesting fact, factoid, is, uh, Dipendenso supplied the gauges for both Toyota and Mazda. And so I'm pretty certain that the speedometer head would work in the courier. And if so, it will find its way into the courier. Because one, it's got a trip odometer. And even though it has the kilometers, it's kind of a cleaner look, I think. It'd be nice, though, to make this this cluster fit the courier. The turn signals are in the wrong place, though. High beam's in the wrong place. That would give me a factory-looking tack instead of the one up in the corner, which, nah, you know, I really don't, it really doesn't matter. The speedometer would be nice, though. It's got the same booby lenses with the little uh, point nipple, whatever the hell you want to call it. That looks like it would all work. One of the deals, though, since the Mazda's or the Celica's got such a low roof line and such a rake to the windshield, is the dashboard in the middle here is fairly long, where on the corners it's very tight. Plus, the cowl extends for another eight inches out, so the firewall is way the hell out there. I don't know what that's going to mean for the Cricket swap. I mean, this dashboard sits out about a foot from the heater box. You see there's the back of the cowl there and then the front of it's another six inches out. There's your defroster vent. So when I do this, being that the firewall is so far up, you see the tow board, the dashboard's going to be a lot farther forward. One thing I'm looking at here on the cricket, the fender wells intrude in, and the firewalls farther forward. I mean, it's very tight engine compartment. This does not look anywhere near as tight, and that may be a problem. The pedals don't look like they're too too much further down. Boy, that's not a very good sound, but the brakes feel a hell of a lot better. Uh-oh. I got fluid squirting. I don't know if you can see it through this windshield, though.
usually when you get fluid squirting out of one reservoir and into the other, it's because the master cylinder is bad and it's transferring fluid from one circuit to the other. I still got no clutch. So stuff I'd have to buy. So I get this thing running. Then I need to test drive it, which is going to be really hard to do without a without a working clutch pedal. Those parts are probably pretty cheap at work. I don't know. And then, you know, of course the tires are shot. But I go out and test drive and we feel, okay, the carburetor's working, the engine's working. It's not getting hot, just on a short, low mile, low speed test drive. Okay, so we decide, I think this will work. Get the tags up on it, get tires up on it, start fixing all the stuff. Replace the master, replace clutch master and slave. You know, anything that's a safety factor. You know, go inside the rear brakes. If everything works and it's not leaking, we leave it. If it's leaking or the wheel cylinders are seized, we have to replace them. But I'm not going to put new shoes on them unless they're just totally bad. I'm not going to put new pads on them unless they're totally bad. I'm not going to put calipers on it unless they're bad. And I think... I'm not really sure whether it's the front brakes or the rear brakes that work. I'll have to look. I think it's the front brakes. This thing rolled just fine, so it didn't seem like the calipers were dragging, thank God. I don't know how much calipers for this thing would cost. So, I want to spend the absolute minimum on this car as possible, even though some of the stuff I might spend a little more on. I mean, I don't have any money anyway, but because, you know, if I'm putting the cricket body on it, I'm still using all the Toyota running gear, all the Toyota chassis stuff. I'm not going to put windshield gaskets in it. I'm not going to replace the, the visors. I'm not going to replace the console. I'm not going to replace carpeting, kick panels, dash pad, you know, I'm not going to replace any of that crap, because it's all going away. I thought about gutting this car, like just completely stripping it down and hauling a rolling shell, you know, with the engine and tranny in it out there. Um, I think if I'm going to have to haul it, I may just do that, just sell the parts, because even though the front fenders are rusty, they're not that bad. Uh, still, even the doors aren't even that bad, really compared to a lot of stuff I've seen. This windshield is not cracked. I mean, you know, I can sell the windshield. I'd probably leave it though to keep the weather out of it. And leave the doors on to keep the weather on it. Or maybe I'd just strip it completely bare, leave the drivetrain, haul it out there. Whatever. It'd be a lot easier to haul that away. A lot less weight. I'll probably do that if I have to and just sell the, the sell the parts. Uh, I'd like to drive it though, and I thought about still even doing that, selling the fenders off of it, selling the hood off of it, and driving it, you know, just leaving the doors on it, but driving it out there just completely Mad Max style, and I, but I don't know what the legalities are, state to state, and I don't want to run into that problem either, so I won't do that. But yeah, I'm going to try to drive this thing pretty well as is legal, safe, you know, sealed up the back end of it so I'm not getting a bunch of exhaust fumes. I'll probably put a 90 degree exhaust tip on it. It'll look ugly, but it'll route the exhaust to the side instead of straight out of the back, which possibly going to asphyxiate me. But yeah, none of this other stuff matters. Yeah, this has got to go. You see, it's just hanging down. It's hanging down right here above my head and all this Kaka is flaking off. Okay, so I'm going to drag my vacuum out here and suck the poop out of the carburetor. If it doesn't come clean that way, then I'll have to pull it and I don't have any gaskets. And If I have to deal with that, I have to deal with that. I'm going to check and see if the fuel pump kicks on. If it does, I'll run a can, a gas can, and some hose and try to pump all that rotten gas out and oil's good coolant's good battery's good I'll start checking wiring I'll see if I have power to the igniter I'll see if you know any of these fuses if I have to clean the fuse box up I'm probably gonna have to I'll get this headliner out of here I may open the doors up and let this thing breathe a little let it dry out as much as possible the sun's out today, although the weather report says it's supposed to it's supposed to rain tonight. Uh, my buddy is showing up. So the one thing I haven't explained, I got this car for free in exchange for fixing up my buddy's Mustang so he can drive it to Arkansas. So that is going to be another 
playlist, another thing. I'm, the work I do to the Mustang is going to be another project. And he needs to have that thing done in like a month or so. So I need to rebuild the carburetor, replace the radiator, fix the tranny leaks, you know, get it running and driving real well. And then he's going to take it, have it aligned. Um, it should be a, a pretty easy build. I didn't look at the carburetor to see what it was yesterday. But it, it actually runs and drives now, just not very well. And the previous owner was turning it into some kind of a uh, gambler car, and so a lot of things need to be put back to where they were. You know, I think he's already taken the lift off of it. But it's a 68 Mustang. So he'll be dropping that thing off today. Um, I also have to go down and pick up some pellets, but I'll get done what I can before real responsibilities pop in. Plus, Luke's doing his his distance learning right now, so I have to be available to him to help him with his schoolwork. I just wanted to pop in and kind of get this video started, and we'll get started on the actual build. Uh, so, we will be back later. You guys take care.